a long time ago, in a career far, far away, I had a boss. Let's call her Jane to protect the innocent. Jane, all in all, was a pretty good boss. We got along quite well. Her boss, mm, let's call him John to protect the guilty, was another man. He was controlling, he had to micromanage everything, he, everything had to be his idea, he took all the credit, he laid all the blame, and as far as he was concerned, the whole universe revolved around him. Have any of you ever had a boss like that? Yeah, unfortunately there's a lot of them around. Well, John was such a micromanager that he would not even let Jane give me my performance appraisals. He had to give me his, my performance appraisal because he had to control everything. Well, one year it was time for performance appraisals and Jane went up to John's office and when she came back down, oh, she was upset, she was angry, she was ranting, she was raving. I finally got out of her what the situation was. In our department, everybody could get, let's say, this much of an increase. She got that much. Now, if any of you have gotten that much of an increase, that's really more insulting than not getting any increase at all, right? So I understood why she was upset. She also said that she had told John exactly what she thought about her performance appraisal, about him, about his management style. I knew that was a mistake but I really didn't have time to discuss it with her, nor did I really have the desire to at that point because I had greater worries on my plate. My performance appraisal was next. And I knew that if Jane only got that much, I was only gonna get that much. Because unfortunately with John, performance appraisals was not about performance, it was about politics. So I went up to his office and I sat down and he gave me my performance appraisal, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, at the end, that much of an increase. I didn't agree with it. I didn't like it. I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't know what to do. I knew that ranting and raving like Jane did was not going to work. I didn't want to not do anything, but I didn't know what to do. So I said, okay, and I left. I went back down to my office. I thought about it the rest of the day. I thought about it that evening. I had nightmares about it that night. But by the next morning, I had a plan. I knew what I was going to do. So I got into my office, waited for John to get into the office. When he did, I called him up and I said, can I come up and talk with you for a minute? He said, sure, come on up. So I went up to his office, sat down, I said, John, I've got a question for you. What do I have to do differently this year from what I did last year to get the full increase next year? And that was the hardest part, just sitting there not saying anything. He looked around the office. He looked at me, looked around the office some more, looked at me, didn't say anything. I continued sitting there, not saying anything. He looked around the office some more. Finally, he says to me, well, Susan, I can't think of anything that you could do differently. I said, okay, and I got up and I left. And we will continue with this story a little bit later. In any situation, with any concept, with any behavior, especially if it's our own, it is often beneficial to look at things from a new perspective, from different perspectives. We can pick up new information that way. We can see ourselves in a different way when we do that. Today we're going to talk about assertive, aggressive, and let me start again, I'm sorry, passive, aggressive, and assertive behavior. And in that, what we're going to do is look at it in two ways. We're going to use the three R's, and we're going to use metaphors to describe this behavior. With the three R's, we have relationships, rights, and respect. 
we all have relationships. First there's relationships, that's really the easy one, because we do have so many relationships. We have professional relationships. We have relationships with our employers, our employees, our customers, our suppliers, our coworkers, our associates. We also have a number of personal relationships. We have relationships with our spouse or significant other. We have relationships with our children, with our parents, with our siblings, with those distant relatives, those pesky ones that we'd really like to prune off the family tree, but we just can't. We still have to maintain a relationship with them. We have relationships with our friends, with our neighbors. So we have all these relationships. Now, when we look at the professional relationships, would you agree that if we have positive relationships with our employers, our employees, our customers, our suppliers, we're going to be more successful in our career, more successful with our prof professional life? Of course. And when you look at the personal relationships, if we have positive relationships with those people in our personal life, aren't we going to be more successful in life? Sure. We're going to be happier. We're going to get more of what we want out of life. So we need to have positive relationships. You can all agree on that. The second R, then, is rights. We all have basic human rights simply because we are human beings. In this country, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We have the freedom of speech, which means we also have the right to be heard, not just to speak out, but also to be heard. We have the right to be treated with professionalism, with dignity, with respect. We have all these basic rights. All of us do. In each relationship, each party also has specific rights. So let's take the customer-supplier relationship, and let's say that you're the supplier. What rights do your customers have when it comes to that? Well, they have the right that to expect that you're going to deliver the product or service that you said you would, that you're going to charge them what you said, that uh, you're going to follow up in whatever manner, that if something's wrong, you're going to make it right. So your customers have all these rights. You as a supplier, though, also have rights. You have the right to expect that they're going to pay you, that they are going to honor the contract, that they are going to do what they say they were going to do. So within each relationship, there's rights. So first are relationships, second are rights, the third R is respect. Respecting that we have these rights in this relationship and respecting also that the other people have these rights. And the respect can be a little bit more difficult to deal with sometimes. When we are passive, it's as though we forget that we have these rights. We don't respect that we have these rights. We let other people take those rights away from us. We don't stand up for ourselves. And the big problem with being passive is if we don't stand up for ourselves, people are going to take advantage of us, right? And we're not going to get what we want out of life. We're not going to be successful. When we are aggressive, it's as though we forget that other people have rights too. And we try to take those rights away from them. So we don't respect that others have rights. We don't respect their rights. We don't respect them. When we're assertive, we find that balance. We respect ourselves. We respect others. We respect our rights. We respect their rights. We find that balance. And that really then becomes key. Now, in addition to the three R's, another way to look at passive, aggressive, and assertive behavior is with metaphors. And I like using metaphors because metaphors can put a little bit more distance between us and our behaviors, make it a little bit more fun to look at, make it sometimes just a little bit easier to deal with. So with our metaphors, let's use wildlife as metaphors. For passive behavior, Rabbits come to mind, don't they? Rabbits are prey. They get hunted. They are passive. They spend their lives running and hiding. They can't help it. They are what nature made them. For aggressive behavior, let's use mountain lions as an example. And instead of mountain lions, I used to use the term cougars. 
And that is why I don't use the term cougars anymore, even though that's a more accurate statement. But mountain lions are predators. They hunt. They have to if they're going to survive. Now, a problem when we are aggressive, when we start attacking our relationships, is that we damage those relationships, and we need positive relationships if we're going to get what we want out of life. So that's a big problem with us being aggressive, with being disrespectful, is that we damage relationships. For assertive behavior, a little bit more difficult to find a wildlife metaphor, because most animals are either prey or they're predators. There's not too many that's in between. One that is, though, is the American black bear. And don't confuse the black bear with the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears are predators. They are mean. They are vicious. Uh, they'll rip you to shreds. But the black bear is neither. Not a predator. It doesn't hunt other animals. It's also not prey. Other animals don't hunt it. Now, if it feels threatened, it'll stand up for itself. It'll protect itself. It'll fight back if it has to. But it's not going to go around attacking other animals. So with the wildlife metaphors, think of rabbits as passive, think of mountain lions as aggressive, and think of the American black bear then as being assertive. Going back to the story that we started out with, I think I did pretty good with that. I lost the battle because I didn't get an increase. I decided not to bring it up with him again. I decided not to go to human resources because I did not think that I would get anything. I decided that I would lose a battle in hopes of winning the war. And I did win the war. Every year after that, I got the full increase. Now there's some things I'd like to have you take away from this story. One is pretty much every situation, you're not going to get what you want if you're passive. If I would have not done anything and been passive, he would have known that he could get, have gotten away with that for every year I was with the company. So being passive doesn't work. If I had been aggressive, like Jane had been, it didn't hurt her and it did not help her in the short term, did not help her in the long term either, because John really made her life miserable for the rest of the time she was with the company. It was a constant battle. It wasn't long after that that she left. So being aggressive, being disrespectful, that's the way we're going to define it, doesn't work either. And I know how difficult it can be when you're dealing with somebody that you don't respect. I mean, heck, I didn't respect John either. Nobody respected John. But sometimes you have to respect the position and treat the person accordingly. So assertive is generally what you want to do if you want to get what you want, short term and long term. So that's one point. The second point is there's a wide variance of assertiveness. There are going to be some of you that will think that I was not assertive enough, that I should have gone to back to him and demanded more, that I should have gone to human resources, that I should have fought it. I thought about that, but I really did not think that that would do me any good. I really did not think that I would win. Now, there are other people that would probably think that I was too assertive in this situation. Well, that's risky going up and talking to him, and in a way I really kind of made a fool out of him. I don't know if he saw that, but made it very obvious that there was no reason why I should not have gotten performance appraisal, a big increase. So the second point is there's a wide variance of assertiveness. You have to find out what is right for you based upon the situation and the people. But if you're not respecting yourself, you're being passive. If you're not respecting the other person, you're being aggressive. So find the middle ground. Third point I'd like to have you take away from this story is that <clears throat> there's a difference between a strategic retreat so that you can regroup and develop a plan and go forward with that plan. That's different from running and hiding. And if you don't know what to do at the time, it's OK to back up, formulate a plan, and come forward again. Very, very rarely is it too late to take action once you're ready to take action. So keep that in mind. When you know the right thing to do is to be assertive, but you don't quite know what to do with that or how to do it, either remember the three R's, relationships, rights, and respect, or remember the wildlife metaphors. 
Do you want to be passive like a rabbit and run and hide? Do you want to be aggressive like a mountain lion and damage your relationships? Or do you want to be assertive and stand up for yourself like the black bear? Stand up for yourself without attacking others. The choice is always yours. It's a good thing about free will. We always have the choice to decide what we want to do and how we want to do it. My recommendation to you would be that you don't act like a predator and you very definitely don't act like a prey. Thank you very much.